Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to be jumping headfirst into fall. I'm so excited for the weather and season to finally change to a little bit of a cooler tone with lots of pumpkin spice lattes and of course fall leaves. So today's tutorial is all about fall in this fall stripes tumbler, which I hope that you enjoy. Of course, everything that I talk about and use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked in the description down below. Should you have any comments or anything that you'd like to share with me or questions, leave those in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer each and every one of them. Additionally, in that description box, you'll also find discount codes as well as links to my social media and my Facebook group, Leisha Be Creative Community. So I feel like it's just time to jump right in and let's get started on fall. I am so ready for this fall weather. I love summer, don't get me wrong, but I also really love sweaters, so I cannot wait for the fall. So I picked out four colors here and I've already prepped and sanded my 20 ounce skinny from Maker Flow. I prepped it with white and I've already done the taping part. So you've seen me do this in my first stripes video, which I will link right here. And right now I'm just trying to decide and map out where I want my colors to go. So I have four colors there, one of which actually changes. I actually changed the green to a darker green because I thought that better complemented the other three darker colors um, to really bring the full fall striped cup together. So I'm just going through and deciding where I want to place all of my colors and then I am going to move on to removing some of the tape and spray painting my cup. So my middle section, I want to make, remain a larger section. So that'll be a two inch section. So I'm removing that area and going to spray paint this with gloss grape spray paint from Krylon. After that has completely dried, I'm then going to mask off the sections that are purple with just some plastic wrap and a little bit more painter's tape so that I can color the second section, which will be a metallic gold. So I could have used acrylic paint, which you're gonna see me use for the other stripes, but if I can use spray paint and make it a little bit easier on myself, I tend to lean towards spray paint over acrylic paint to do my coverage of color. So I'll take this to spray paint the gold metallic on two of the stripes, and then we will go ahead and head into glittering. Okay, so now on to glittering. So I've mixed up equal parts of part A and part B. I have about five mLs of Alumalite's Quick Coat that I've mixed up, which is their fast setting epoxy. And right now I'm just going to apply my epoxy in a very thin layer to just my gold section to start. So I will say to both the gloss and the metallic spray paints will take a little bit of time to dry. So I would say I probably waited a good hour or so just so I should, could make sure that it was completely dry before I went into applying the epoxy so I didn't smudge any of my paint. So again, you wanna make sure you have a super thin layer on your cup in order to get that glitter to stick. So this is Jitters from Peachy Olive Glitters. I love this color. It is like a, like a yellow gold, I guess you could say, but definitely a little bit darker than a traditional yellow gold, but it is just a gorgeous metallic color. color. So that's Jitters. So now that that has been glittered, I'll move on to the purple sections. So I'm just gonna remove the plastic wrap that I had applied earlier. And then I'm going to, again, go in with my epoxy and put a very thin layer of epoxy on the purple section so we can glitter those. So I didn't remove the plastic wrap before and apply epoxy. I could have applied epoxy to all the sections and then just very carefully glittered, but sometimes I make quite a mess with glitter, <laughs> which I love. So um, in order to make sure I didn't get it all over the place, I definitely wanted to keep that plastic wrap on for as long as I could. So now that I'm done epoxying, I'm going to take Figgy, which is also from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is a fine glitter, and I'm going to apply that to those purple sections. Figgy is like a, it's definitely a purple. It's definitely in the purple family, but I can't even describe it because it's not really a maroon. It's not like a mauve. It's just, it's absolutely gorgeous under epoxy. Just this purple, like metallic that it gives off 
it just really is a true beautiful fall color that I love to use each and every year. So I want to make sure that I get full coverage and what I love about Peachy Olive Glitters is I usually only have to do one coat of glitter so I don't have to worry about going in and applying a second coat especially since I'm using epoxy method so I don't have to wait for it to dry and apply a second coat. So and especially with it base coated both the gold metallic and the purple it is absolutely perfect and I don't have any issues with my paint or my glitter not covering. So now that I have done the glittering, I am going to go back in and remove the painter's tape at this point. And I'm removing the painter's tape because I don't want my epoxy to cure under the glitter and stick to my painter's tape, which would make it a nightmare to try and have to remove later. So removing that now, hopefully remembering what colors I'm going to be putting in those two sections so that I can go and glitter the second sections. Okay, so before I got into these next two colored sections, I did spray seal my cup after I let my epoxy cure for two hours. So I just used Rust-Oleum Clear Coat two times to seal my glitter so they don't move for the next sections. So I've pulled out some Arteza acrylic paints that I've had for quite a while. I pulled out an orange and then I pulled out like a spring green and like a gold. This one's called Raw Sienna. So I pulled those two colors out because again, I've changed my green from that lighter green to kind of a more Halloween colored green or fall colored green. And I wanted to try and get a, a paint that matched the best. So what I do love about the Arteza paints is you can use regular acrylic paint. Let me start by saying that. So don't feel like you need to go out and buy these. I will link them in the description if you're interested in them. I love these paints because I only really need to do like one coat in order to get enough of a base coverage for my glitters. Um, and it's much thicker than just traditional acrylic paint that you can buy from the craft store, which I love. So that's kind of why I love the Arteza colors that I have here and why I chose that pack. But you certainly could go ahead and use regular acrylic paint that you can pick up from Walmart or Target or the craft store or wherever. Please do not feel like you need to go out and purchase these, um, but that's just kind of my reasoning for why I chose to use these acrylic paints for this. So I've painted my two sections and I won't lie, I was a little bit nervous because after I had painted them, I thought that my cup was looking more like a Halloween cup than a fall cup. <laughs> so I'm now going to prepare to do my glitter. So for glittering, I am going to go in and do Mod Podge for this. So I could have done epoxy, um, but I was nervous that I was going to get epoxy all over my already glittered sections. So I chose to do Mod Podge knowing that I'll have to do two coats of glitter in order to get full coverage on my cup because Mod Podge does dry super quickly. So I'm going to speed up this section of the video because it is exactly like I did with the other two sections. I'm only going to show you the first layer of glitter I did off camera, then do my second coat of glitter to make sure that I had full coverage on my entire cup. Okay, so for my orange sections, I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you like what color I was using, <laughs> but for the orange sections here, I am going in with Winifred. So this is like definitely like a fall orange, a really beautiful like autumn fall color, just gives me all the fall vibes for sure. So after I am done with Winifred, I'll put that away and then we're going to move into the green. So originally I had chosen a lighter color, which was Olea. And I had thought that that was going to give me like a good kind of mesh. Um, but then kind of looking at it, I realized that I needed something a little bit darker. So I decided to go with hash. So hash is kind of like a camo colored green, if you will. Um, and it definitely gives off like flecks of gold as well. So I think it complements jitters. So that is what I decided to go in with for the green sections. So of course, I'll list all of those in the description box as well. So after I finished glittering those two sections, I did clear spray that entire cup to make sure that the glitter didn't move. And then I did go in again with Quick Coat, which you'll see me also use later in the video. Um, so this cup now has two coats of epoxy on it. It is nice and smooth. So now I'm just going to do my least favorite part of the cup process, which is sanding. So I'm taking a 120 grit sanding block to the bottom because there wasn't a whole lot that needed to be sanded, but I wanted to make sure that the edges were smooth. And then on top, I'm going to use my 80 grit sanding block to um, sand the top rim and make sure that I'm getting that fine line of stainless steel. So as soon as I am done doing the dreaded sanding, I will take this cup upstairs to get it washed and dried with dish soap and water. 
Okay, so I wanted to show you guys in Cricut Design Space how I came up with the decals. So these are both decals that I created myself. I created the Hello Fall in the Over app, and then I created the um, fall leaves with just some clip art that I was able to get my hands on just through Google Imaging, and obviously just did the outline so that it's just a fully um, solid piece um, and doesn't have any lines or veins in the stemming. So I wanna create like a like a border, if you will, around both Hello Fall and the leaves. And you're gonna see what I mean when you look at the final cut, but I wanted it to incorporate the vinyl strips that I would normally put on a striped cup. Um, but I wanted it to also incorporate like this leaf lacing, so to speak. So I just took the image that I created and then I took two rectangles and made them 11 inches in width by 0.15 inches in uh, height and just duplicated them and made sure to align everything to the left and then weld everything together and then duplicated that image. After I did that, I then worked on the Hello Fall image. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So keeping in mind that I know that my smaller stripes are one inch and I know that my center stripe is two inches because I used one inch painter's tape. So I wanna make sure that the entire image altogether does not go bigger than two inches or one inch depending on what section I am working on. So I'm going to again take that rectangle and make it again 11 by 0.15 and then I'm going to adjust some of the center section there, the hello fall, because I want it to be prominent. I want it to be able to be read. Um, so I want to make sure that it is large enough, but also that it's not warped or wonky looking when you're looking at the cup head on. So I'm just adjusting this, making sure that everything is centered appropriately. I'm doing a lot of this by just using the align feature. So I lined my two stripes to the left and then welded those or attached those two pieces together. And then I'm able to select the whole section and center it to make sure that my hello fall is directly in the center of that image. So now I have that entire image. I'm going to attach the whole thing so that it is all one piece. And then I decided that this middle section needed just a little bit of something extra. So I decided that I'd go into the images in Cricut Design Space and try and find a leaf that I thought would look cute in the center. So I have the full version of Cricut. I know that not everybody does. So I don't remember if my image was a free image or if it was an image that I'm, I happen to be subscribed to because of the fee I pay for full access. But in case you can't um, get this specific image, you certainly could just get a piece of clip art off of Google and use that as well. So because I created this image, I am going to add this image to the links in the description so that you can use this SVG on your own. But obviously I will make sure that those leaves as well were a free version in Cricut so that I am not obviously doing any sort of copywriting or stealing other images. So I then just decided to add just some cute maple style leaves on the Hello Fall section. I just felt like it really pulled the whole fall look together. And um, so yeah, I kind of just add those, place them as I feel that they are appropriate, hopefully spaced correctly uh, far away from the wording, and then attach the whole thing and get these both, both sections cut. So I printed two of the leaf lace, if you will, and then obviously one of the two inch section. So I've already weeded all of the excess vinyl off of the images. And this part for applying was a little bit tricky. And the reason why it was tricky is because I wanted to have all of the seams of the vinyl on in the same section like lined up. So in order to do that, because there is the hello fall in the center of the cup, I had to be very particular with how I applied it. So I couldn't do the way I typically do this. I had to be a little bit creative. So I just sliced half of that vinyl and then I'm going to apply the hello fall section first and I put that piece of backing back on because I wanted to make sure that obviously it didn't stick to the cup while I was applying the one side, but I wanted these seams to meet directly in the back. So I take the one section, sorry for the large headshot here. I took the one section and applied it all the way over and then removed the backing of that vinyl and then did the exact same thing with the other side. So 
I probably didn't need to do this with the first section because again, it's the very first section. Um, but I wanted to make sure because I knew that my lines were going to be longer than the circumference of my cup entirely. So I wanted to just make sure that the lines met up in the back and that it looked correctly um, and wasn't too, the leaves weren't too close on the other side. So I'm then just going to take my X-Acto knife um, after I kind of fix and line up my lines here so that it's directly in the middle. Um, I'm going to just take my X-Acto knife and I will cut off the excess here before I move in to doing the leaf lace sections on the other two sections. So I definitely would say for this section, um, the vinyl placement, I should say, on this cup, you definitely want to take your time with it because it is just one of those um, different designs where like you really have to think about how you're placing your vinyl in order to make sure that you are you know getting your lines placed in the back so that they're all lined up now if you're someone who doesn't care if the seams line up then certainly go for it and just apply your vinyl stripes as you'd like to or you could definitely recreate my images and just make the lines a little bit shorter so that it matches the exact circumference of your cup with just a little bit of extra um, for some extra play there so now that i've done um applying that section i did print an extra rectangle strip here for the bottom section um, and that was because i totally had forgot that i had this tiny section at the bottom that i needed to make sure that i had vinyl for so i just cut an extra strip there before i go into the leaf lace so with the leaf lace, I didn't have to print any other rectangles other than this one vinyl, this one extra vinyl strip, because the way that the leaf lacing is set up, it has the vinyl strip on the top as well as the bottom. So it will serve as what would be the vinyl strip for those that separates those colored sections. The other thing that I'd say is with this gold textured vinyl that I have which I have literally been loving like I found it at the craft store and like I, I feel like I've used it in at least the last three or four tutorials because like I just love the way that this looks but the one thing that, to remember about um, using this textured foil is that at least the transfer tape that I have it it's not as strong as I wish that it was um, I had a little bit of a tough time getting the uh, textured vinyl to stick to the cup. Um, so that was a little bit difficult to have to deal with. Um, I definitely had to apply a lot of pressure with my blue squeegee in order to get that vinyl to stick to my transfer tape. So if you have strong transfer tape um, or just a better transfer tape than I have, I definitely recommend getting like the Stronghold like Cricut brand or whatever brand you're using, but more of a Stronghold so that the vinyl the, the textured vinyl does stick to your transfer tape and you don't have as tough of a time. So this section got a little bit cut off because of the section that I cut. So I had to also be a little bit careful and making sure that I had enough vinyl lines on the edges to match up. So thankfully for this, because I did cut this as such a long, long section, I didn't have to worry about my lines not meeting up. So the other thing too, because of the way that the leaves are um, like cut and duplicated on here, it was like a perfect match. So I didn't have any like half pieces of leaves, like it all met up and was even in between all of the little leaf structures in the center. So it literally looked completely seam seamless. And the only seams that you could see if you were looking closely were where the two vinyl lines met. So I'm gonna do the same thing, of course, for this last section. Um, which will go on that jitter section in the bottom to match the cup. So I chose to do the gold metallic vinyl on top of the jitters section. I was actually a little bit nervous because I was afraid that it was just going to blend right in. But because of the color of the gold metallic vinyl and the color of the jitters, they're actually two different colors. So they're still in the same gold family, if you will, but jitters has more of a richer color, whereas this was more of like a bright in your face true gold color for the vinyl so I think it just looks perfect so I'm going to go ahead and apply this last piece and then we're going to get this back on the turner 
The very last piece that I wanted to show you is that I put this back on the turner so that I could apply a quick coat from CC DIY. And so I'm applying that to the gold metallic vinyl because I wanna make sure that when I do go into my final coats of epoxy, that I don't have any lifting of my vinyl and this quick coat makes sure that my vinyl stays put and doesn't move. So I waited for that to dry for about 30 to 45 minutes, then applied two final coats of epoxy and the cup was officially finished. I absolutely love how this cup turned out. It is the first fall cup of the season for me and I can't wait to make many more. If you love today's video, please make sure you give us a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next week.